Hello everyone, today we are going to be going over the FDAR FDAT system. So of all the projects in Project Gamma, this is the only one that is in a prototype phase. The reason I left it in a prototype phase and didn't like completely finish building this was that I didn't want to limit you guys with what you can do with this. So the FDAT stands for Far Distance Analog Transmitter. So what it does is it takes an analog input from right here where this green wool is and then converts it into what's known as a pulse width signal. This allows us to send hex signals at repeater speed. The FDAR is short for Far Distance Analog Receiver. It takes the pulse width generated from the FDAT and converts it back into a hex signal and stores it right here. This allows you to send hex signals much faster over long distances. So let's say we wanted to travel 300 blocks like I have it set right here. Well, if we use the FDAT and the FDAR system, it would take at most 7.6 seconds to travel the whole 300 blocks. Now, if we use traditional wiring and no insta lines or three wide lines, that same distance would take 7.5 seconds. So why would we use the FDAR FDAT system? Because you aren't seeing everything. Traditional has no change. If we send a 1, it takes 7.5 seconds. If we send a 13, it also takes 7.5 seconds. The benefit to using pulse width is that the time it takes varies. The actual repeater line only takes 1.6 seconds to travel 300 blocks. So that other 6 seconds is in converting the hex signal to pulse width. But it only takes us 6 seconds if we send a 15. If we send a 1, it takes 4 ticks, or 0.4 seconds. If we send a 13, it takes 52 se ticks, or 5.2 seconds. So if we compare every possible option we have for hex, traditional wiring is only faster when we use 15, and that is by 0.1 second. I actually wasn't the first to come up with the idea of a pulse width converter. I actually got the idea off of another YouTuber named Nubasaurus. All I did was take the concept he introduced and optimized it to my liking. So let's get to building this. We will begin by building the FDAT, which is the transmitter. This build is Java and Bedrock compatible and is extremely easy to build, as in you only need these components. That's literally it. We will begin by building our input, then we will build our pulse width converter. So this is built similar to a register, but instead of having two blocks, it only has one. So as you can see, there's only one block here and there's not another one right here. Once we're done with that, we're gonna replace a repeater right here and place a repeater right here and set this comparator to subtraction mode. Our next step is to place a block here along with the torch. So this will prevent our signal from being use until we are ready for it to be used. Then we can replace a repeater here and set it to two tick along with an observer. And just like that, we are done. The next device we're going to build is the FDAR. Now luckily for us, both the FDAR and the FDAT take up the same area, which is three by eight. We'll start off by placing a redstone repeater and then placing a redstone comparator on subtraction mode. Then we'll place another redstone comparator also in subtraction mode and place a barrel and completely fill it up to a value of 14. So the easiest way for me to do that is to just fill it up completely except for one block. Once we have that, then we're going to place this block here as along with a piece of redstone dust. Now this creates a clock. If you've seen my video on analog clocks, then this should ring a bell for you. Our next step is to place a comparator here and then build a simple register to store our output. And there we go, the FDAR. A practical way to use this system would be for your own network. Just create a way to store an ID and you could be sending your friends digital signals inside digital signals in no time. Now some of you might be looking at this thinking to yourself, isn't there a better way to do what this thing can? You know what? That is an excellent point to bring up. Because does it really matter? Sure, there might be technology that can beat this, but in today's world, new technology is developed almost overnight. I take pride in the fact that I built this system, so I don't care if there is a design that's faster or smaller because I built something cool. And the same goes for you. If you built a pulse width transmission system by yourself, that's awesome. Don't feel bad if this trumps your design because you came up with an idea and built it into reality. And that's something to take pride in. Speaking of taking pride in something, if you want to watch this super cool trailer that I am super proud of, 
click on this video, and I'll see you in the next one.